Juice General Manager Alicia Price just wanted to give you a quick update on, on what we're doing uh, as far as restoration efforts. As you know, we had severe storms roll through our system last night uh, that caused extensive damage uh, to our power lines and facilities. Uh, right now, our focus is on safety of our employees and safety of the community. My name is Michael McLeod. I'm a line foreman for GEUS. I've uh, been a, here for about 18 years. Uh, my initial thoughts, first got the first job and pulled up was, wow, this is going to take a while. And uh, still didn't have any idea how much damage there actually was. Uh, one of the biggest obstacles was just getting to where we needed to get, whether it was trees or poles or people in the way. I mean, it was, it was a lot of work just to get to the job and get, get started. It was kind of a scary situation because I'm one of the younger guys and I don't really know everything yet. <clears throat> You're not going to know everything, but it was a good learning experience also because I got to follow some of the older linemen and work under them a little bit. So I was at home and I was sitting on my couch and the wind started to blow really fast and that's when I thought, okay, something's coming through here. Uh, and before I knew it, uh, I got the notification on my phone uh, and then it seemed as though the storm was here already. Uh, so I did what most people do. I got on Facebook <laughs> and saw people around Greenville pretty much have uh, them their own post on what they were experiencing at the time and, and so I realized that not only was the wind just picking up but there was a real storm coming through uh, and, and before I knew it people started to post about their power going out my power went out for just a moment uh, and that's when I realized okay it, it's real something's here. Me and my wife were eating supper at Mariachi's when the storm blew in and we got a call from Dwayne Adams that works over to Plumbing Supply and said, uh, we've got a problem down here, y'all better get back. So within five minutes of the storm ending, we were back down here to see all the chaos and, and the wind and what it had tore up around our four or five blocks here on the east end of Lee Street. The storm kind of came through on Wednesday um, and we had already left for the day. Um, I think it came through around 5, 35, 45 or so, I think was the time stamp. Uh, we left around 5. So really nobody was downtown when it happened. I don't think uh, in this area, everybody got off work uh, on time that day. Um, so we were already at home, um, just kind of doing our normal routine. Got a phone call, hey, storm's coming through. You might want to go downtown, check on your building um, because we had got hit a few weeks um, prior and we lost our whole roof. Um, so we had already went through the whole thing of uh, cleanup and having to uh, deal with the loss of um, time and equipment and stuff like that. So. We went through that already, so we rushed down here after the storm came through and saw literally just all of Lee Street right here covered in, in debris, metal roofing, um, just uh, power poles down, uh, electric lines everywhere on the ground. Um, so there was not, not that many people out at that time, and then as it kind of, we came through, checked everything out, make sure uh, you know nobody was hurt or anything like that, and we started kind of coming together us and, and the, the guys at Crawford Smith down there and people up the road coming together trying to kind of start cleaning up um, and making sure you know they get it out of the roads and, and everybody can be safe while they're walking down here. Uh, so that's kind of what happened. Well, we were monitoring the weather for some time prior to the storm's arrival because we knew the possibility of severe weather was approaching the area. Um, once the storm arrived it was obviously pretty intense a lot of high winds caused a lot of damage around town. I took my wife out to eat at uh, Applebee's and we were sitting there and all of a sudden I had already brought extra work clothes to, with me to town, you know, because I heard the storm was going to be pretty bad, but I didn't, obviously didn't think it was going to be that bad. And uh, it was started happening and we just saw people running to their cars and, and driving off real fast and screaming and stuff. And they said, someone said there was a tornado, so. You know, we took shelter, obviously, and, and then uh, after that, people just people from work started calling me, and we just came up to to the shop and pretty much regrouped and got together and got, came up with a game plan. And that's how it all happened. Just the pure destruction of the storm. I mean, it's it's one thing to 
see it on TV, but to see it in person, just all the trees that, I mean, really, really big trees, uprooted, falling on everything, taking everything out, breaking poles, breaking power lines. It's just, you know, it was, it was really discouraging. My name is Jose Pintero. I've been here for uh, a little over 23 years. We got hit by so strong winds that took everything that belongs to us down. So, you know, that, to me, whatever happened over last week, it was, it's, it was a big challenge. Well, what we did immediately after the storm is officers began driving around looking for anybody that may have been injured uh, or trapped. Our dispatch center began to get flooded with 9-1 calls and non-emergency calls uh, about the storm, so they had to triage and did a great job at sifting through those calls to prioritize them uh, where we needed to go. Obviously, our main concern at that point was to make sure uh, we got to anybody that may have been injured or trapped and identifying any potentially dangerous situations such as power lines being down. I'm Joe Bob Brand. I'm a foreman at Greenville Electric, and I've been here 19 years. And uh, we rode up on 69 during the storm, and there was a concrete pole that we thought would never, we'd never see on the ground that was on the ground. And there was wires across the road, and there was four more poles down behind it. And uh, it was a bad night, but it took us probably 15 hours to get the, the wire back up across the road where cars could drive through, and uh, it was pretty stressful, but we got her done. Once we come back, we went around the block and all to see exactly where all the metal and the, the stuff that was blown off in Lee Street had come from to find out that our warehouse had blown the back door in and took the roof off of the warehouse and scattered it across our main building and then knocked some brick off in the front over our base. Uh, once we surveyed the damage and come back up here, we come inside to tarp and cover up and move furniture and stuff like our furniture is still a mess now because we've got it moved around so we can keep the leaks from getting in on our, on our merchandise. I've not experienced a storm quite like that before here. Um, and I guess it was the surprise of the devastation that actually took place. I don't think many people realized until after the storm was over and they you know, started to drive around the community and started to see what type of storm came through and all of the, of the devastation that the wind caused. When you start to see that buildings were uh, starting to, to be destroyed, when you start to see trees being ripped up out of the ground, I think you really started to pay a little bit more attention to what really came through. It was a storm that I don't think any of us were looking for or were expecting to come. Uh, my name is Victoria Riojas. I am a customer service representative at GEUS, and I've been here for seven years. I'm a resident of Greenville and I was also impacted by the storm. Um, I was out for a day and a half and um, I was still, I still had to go to work the next day because I knew that um, there was people out there that were out without power just like me. My name is Juanito Hendricks. I've been here with youth going on 18 years. I'm a lineman. Well, there was no need to go home and sleep. I didn't have power. My neighbors didn't have power. so. Our main goal was to re-energize as much as we could before we went home. And uh, I think everybody did a good job and the contractors that come in and helped. And uh, we all worked together to get uh, Greenville back up and running. So I think on our, on our part in customer service, the least that we could do for our linemen is to um, just reassure our customers and let them know, you know, at least, you know, something that's going on, what, what the update is on the, on the storm and um, what kind of repairs are needed to be made. Um, because it's even difficult for us to understand what exactly they're doing out there. Um, so the best thing that we can do is just try to help them understand what the process is and what they need to do in order to have the power restored. 
My name is Dora Regalado and I'm the customer service supervisor. One of the hardest things uh, seeing was having our customers come in and being without power and we were facing our own challenges at their customer service center since we were without power for two days. We had the CSRs relocated to the other building uh, to be able to answer the phones um, since we were, had high call volume those days. For me, I guess what was more upsetting was seeing the elderly come in and being without power. I think that's one of the hardest things that I had to see. So it's been kind of a different and unique experience having it happen to you in your town, literally going down the road and seeing like buildings down, collapsing down to the ground, or just roofs gone, or uh, you know, a bunch of just debris and everything everywhere, and people are just you know, without power, or you know, their homes, they can't, they can't live there, they have to find somewhere else because you know, they don't have any power, their home burned down or something like that. Um, so it's pretty crazy. It was really heartwarming to see as many people volunteering to, you know, just help get everybody back on track and get some type of normal back. Um, and I mean, just a lot of people that were, I mean, just even reaching out and helping us, feeding us and, and trying to take care of us. They knew how many hours we were putting in and how hard we were working trying to get everybody back on and get everything back to normal. Everybody was great. There was uh, people bringing us drinks. And, and, and stuff like that. And we didn't come across anybody that was uh, disrespectful or didn't uh, try to help us, but we've had a few run around our barricades. And, but other than that, we were fine. My name's Chris Drawn. I've been here for about 19 years. Um, I'm the underground foreman. But of course, we do everything. Um, you know, this little tornado come through tore up a lot of stuff and uh, a lot of poles down, wire down, trees down. The only other storm that this is kind of close to is back in the 80s when it blew Ernie's uh, down up there and then consequently it caught on fire. Uh, we were here that day uh, during the day and all and it, uh, it, when it took it out, it was kind of the same way as what this storm was but it happened on the other end of Lee Street instead of this end. So yes, I, we've lived, this will be the second one of these I've lived through. Biggest stuff I saw as far as damage and stuff was the Lee Street area where Crawford Smith and stuff was. Um, we went ahead and I guess the other crews that came from out of town went ahead and started picking that up. And uh, which honestly I was glad to see them I mean, Ditton and all of them were out there, and I, I can't really tell you how grateful I was to see all of them come in. Um, we went ahead and went down to uh, Commerce Drive, Highway 224. They had a few trees on the feeder that we had to cut out, a couple uh, broke cross arms and uh, lines down over there. We repaired them as quickly as possible and uh, got them back on as quickly as we could. My name is Tristan Hooten and I've been at Juice for three years. Highway 69, all the six transmission poles went down and a concrete pole that wasn't supposed to ever break but it was laying on the ground. It was something else. Not only do I think none of us really expected that storm to come through, I also don't think we quite expected this community to rally together and pull together like we did. Um, it was amazing. It was something I, I believe we all will remember moving forward. If there are ever other storms to come through, I hope that we stay true to what we all saw in the aftermath of the storm that came, which was this community coming together, businesses, people, everyone just sort of reached their hand out uh, and helped their neighbors and the people that needed the help the most. Uh, and I really, really think that that's one of the aspects that makes Greenville so special is the fact that not only uh, do we rally together on social media to help each other out, but we also did something very much like that in person. Whether it was bringing a pack of water or food or helping, you know, clean up, uh, we all came together. And I think that's what makes Greenville so special. Everybody's been pretty good, you know. Um, we've had people come from from different towns and cities to come help us out, get it, you know, to restore our power. We were out for, 
you know, maybe four or five days down here. Um, and I think some people were maybe seven days without power, you know, so it's been, it's, it's not fun, but, you know, Juice and, and everybody at, um, you know, within Greenville in the area have been coming together and, and coming over to help us out, get the power poles back up, restoring power, um, getting businesses back on their feet, people back in their homes. Um, so it's been Just happening. being patient with the process also. Sure. Yeah, definitely. Assistance we received from Garland, City of Denton, uh, Weatherford, FEC was huge. They, they, they completed a lot of work in a, in a you know, short amount of time, did a fantastic job. It, was, it took a huge impact on, off of us as a utility. They, they played a huge role in what we had to restore, the power that needed to be restored. Um, I couldn't say thank you enough to all those guys that showed up and helped, no matter how, if it was just a two-man service crew or a six-man construction crew, it was, they all had a huge impact. And I want to thank all the people that come in to help us get all this stuff back up. Thank you very much. And uh, we'd still be working, this stuff still be out if the uh, all the contractors and all the municipalities didn't come in and help. It was great, the community's involvement, uh, we couldn't have done it without them. Uh, they were great in helping us, whether it was getting us water and towels or donating their time and food uh, to feed us or just helping uh, clearing debris and stuff around town. With all the police and fire um, personnel that were around, they were working together with other first responders from uh, outside cities and they, they, we couldn't have done it without them either. They were great and instrumental in helping us through this incident. Oh, everybody was so grand uh, that was down here. And within 30, 45 minutes, there were 30 or 40 people down here asking how they could help and everything. We talked to a couple of the linemen up by the courthouse to make sure everything was dead so we could start moving stuff. And in a matter of 45 minutes to an hour, we kind of had Lee Street kind of cleaned up. Um, the police department come. I know even Rollette was here before we left. Uh, Greenville PD, uh, the highway patrols, everybody's been super nice through this whole thing to try to help us get back together, get back going. Uh, waste management, Jimmy Dickey, got us some roll-offs so that we could pick up. Uh, Ken Bird loaned us a, a, a skid steer with a grapple so we could get picked up. So, I mean, I'd hate to start mentioning a lot of names because I miss somebody because everybody was great. And thank you, Cammy, for uh, bringing us food and uh, keeping us keeping us fed, and all the customers that uh, you know brought us water and helped us out and uh, gave us some words of encouragement. The biggest problem we came across was down poles. Uh, we had to actually wait for the poles to be reset before we could get our operations back up. Uh, what that entailed was waiting for uh, TND to get the poles reset, uh, get the power lines moved over in a safe manner before we could even access the areas to get in to fix them. Hence, Highway 69. The power lines fell, the transmission lines fell uh, on Highway 69, and to clear the path across Highway 69, they actually had to cut the fiber. When they cut the fiber, even though some areas didn't lose power, uh, that that particular ring was broken just as any other type of ring so you don't have a consistent path to feed around so when that fiber got broke we had to wait until TND was able to get contractors in to replace the transmission lines once the transmission lines were replaced then I was able to come in later on I was pretty proud of the guys because they were able to get in there and get the lines back up I think within six days we had everything back up and working almost to 100%. I'm David Jones. I'm the transmission and distribution manager here at Juice. And uh, the, the crews that we've had come in here uh, have been fantastic. Uh, Juice crews got beat up pretty bad uh, the first night. We worked a lot of long hours without any rest. And uh, when we finally did get additional crews to come in and help us, one of the things that stuck out to me the most and that I'm gonna take away from this with me is uh, one of the crew leaders said to me, he said, look, you guys have been taking a beating and uh, we're here to take some of that burden off of you. And uh, you know, it, that, uh, that really hit me, uh, it really moved me because they did, they came in 
and uh, uh, they helped us carry this. They took the beating for us so that my guys could uh, get some rest and, uh, and recuperate. And uh, we all fell in and worked together to get the lights back on. And I can't express enough uh, my appreciation for the Juice Line crews and for the, the uh, 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 Dick Municipal Electric, uh, Weatherford Electric, and uh, uh, Garland Power and Light, and uh, the numerous uh, contract tree crews we've had come in. They've been excellent help to a man. And really the only way that I know of that we can ever repay them is uh, somewhere down the line. Somebody's gonna need some help and we're gonna be there to help them.